Hi there guys, welcome back to the next video in my Cantor Solar Run series, where I aim to solve the game with a Pokemon chosen by our randomizer wheel. Let's recap the rules and get straight back into it. First off, the wheel decides, which is three Pokemon, which is one of the three, and we do the run with that Pokemon. Secondly, I can only use that Pokemon in battle, but I can catch utility Pokemon for HMs. Third, I can't heal in battle using items, but healing outside of battle is allowed, and moves like recover and rest also allowed. Fourth, I can use the badge boost glitch, because it's kind of unavoidable in Gen 1. Finally, I can use TMs and HMs. Now let's recap, let's get on with the video. Okay, let's get on with the next uh, spin of the wheel. That Kakuna run was just annoying as hell. But that makes me feel like I can have a much easier day today. Gengar, wow, that'll be a hell of a Pokemon. What have we got next? We've got Bellsprout. Eh, sort of leaning towards Gengar so far. And see what the third spin comes up with. And we have Primeape. Ooh, that would be good. But you know what? After Kakuna, I need an easier run. We'll do Gengar. Right, now we've chosen Gengar on the, um, on the wheel. Let's get started with the run. So, just to start talk about Gengar before we even uh, pick the pick the rival in that. It's special attack. It's special is just insane. It's got around about like 90 special. Because um, special attack and special defense are split. And speed is 110. Like, that's crazy. Now we've gone through some of the stats. So, I am going to talk about um, our new rival for today. And this is one of my new um, subscribers, a guy called DJ Shadow. Uh, thanks for the subscribe, thanks for the comments. Um, and please make sure to check out his channel. He um, does a lot of Pokemon related content like me. I've just watched a few videos recently where he was... A few, few um, videos recently where he was taking Gen 4 Pokemon, put them into Fire Red, and like trying to see if you can solve the game with just them Pokemon. And honestly, considering you can't put Gen 4 Pokemon naturally into Fire Reds and Leaf Green, I don't think. Um, it's very interesting to see how they do. Um, so definitely check out his channel. So the first um, battle with the rival. First battle with the rival. Gonna use, we start off with um, Confusion. Like Confuse Ray, Nightshade and Lick, which are insane moves to start off with, especially Nightshade. So if you're not familiar with how Nightshade works, it does damage based off your level. So in this instance, it will be five, um, 5 damage. So it's going to take 4 Nightshades to take out this Charmander. But this move is going to be insane against Brock. Um, <clears throat> like so much so that I'm going to do minimum battles as much as I can here with Gengar. Um... Because I think even at level 6, we are going to be able to beat Brock. And that's due to the fact that he uses only normal moves and we're a ghost type. So, there is, he shouldn't even be able to do damage to us here. We should be able to do this easily first time. So, let's let's start the battle. Geodo comes out. We're at level 7 thanks to the um, little bug catcher in Viridian Forest that's mandatory. And as you can see here, Nightshade is always doing 7 damage. He can't do anything against us. Geodude goes down without any damage being taken. Now, Oryx comes out. The thing we need to watch out for here is Bide, because I think Bide still can hit us, but thankfully doesn't use it whatsoever, and we don't even take one single point of damage against Brock. We're 10 minutes in-game time at this point, which is fantastic. It usually takes around about 10 minutes to get here. So there's nothing really else to talk about. The trainers after Brock were, again, so easy. I, I... So I moved on to Cerulean. Go against the um, the trainer, the manager trainer in her, in her gym before we can go against Misty. And just because of some of the um, battles, that I, I did accidentally run into a few of the trainers in Mount Moon. So we are level 18 for this. That trainer goes down without a hitch. Let's save. We haven't even hit 30 in game minutes here, and we're already at Misty. Usually at this point, I'm either still against Brock or I'm just about halfway like through Mount Moon. So, Staryu comes out. She actually does have water moves, so we, she can hit us here. But because we've got Nightshade, it's going to be a free hit KO to take out the Staryu. Next up comes out is the Starmie, the scary one. So, thankfully, Starmie doesn't have any um, psychic moves here, but she does have Bubble Beam, which is scary. So, we've got to make sure that we've got Confuser, we use Nightshade, and we take her out. Thankfully, she gets hit in Confusion, and we can take her out with three Nightshades. So... 30 in game minutes and we haven't lost a battle yet so the only other thing we have to do now is go and beat the rival on nugget bridge and i don't think he's going to be a problem whatsoever either 
Pidgeotto, if it gets a couple of sand attacks off, that's probably the worst thing that can happen. But I don't think they're going to do much damage to us at all. If we confuse the Pidgeotto, Gust doesn't hit us. The most, yeah, the most terrifying move that that Pidgeotto has got is sand attack. <laughs> and for the first time in a long time, we managed to get through Pidgeotto without even getting hit. Uh, Abra is going to be a just an easy, like it, it, they're just going to give us that battle. When it comes to Rata, Lick doesn't do any damage against normal moves. I can I keep forgetting that. I just keep testing it out. So I do lose a few um, seconds of in-game time there. And now Charmander comes out. Lick will damage it. I was trying to get the paralysis um, on it. And I want to keep some nightshades so I can continue up Nugget Bridge without having to go back to the Pokemon Center. So, first time victory against Nugget Bridge rival. Let's see. Um, there's not very really much else to do. I, I'm sh I am showing this battle here against the um, the innocent bystander rocket. <laughs> I always thought that was quite funny. So he starts off in a matchup, and he's also got a drowsy in his arsenal. The matchup is no problem whatsoever. It can't hit us, but the drowsy gives you the first. Give well, gave me the first taste of why I need to be scared of psychic types in this run. First off, it disables Nightshade, which isn't good. Lick doesn't affect drowsy. So now, until I'm um, not disabled anymore, all I can do is confuse it and hope that it doesn't hit me. But <clears throat> it takes a while for this. Disable, as much as it's a bad move, it is so debilitating when you're um, trying to do a run like this. Annoyingly, the drowsy is not confused anymore. We have to confuse it again. It hits itself with confusion. And we're still disabled. We are still disabled at this point. And then it puts us to sleep. So I'm actually thinking, you know what? Am I going to lose this battle? It disables Nightshade again, just as it's undisabled. Flipping heck. Like this was, for the first part of the game, this was tougher than Misty, this battle. Thankfully though. Oh, he's put me back to sleep. I was not expecting that. Then he hits himself with confusion. So we do get, manage to get past him first time. But I was not expecting this innocent bystander to be as difficult as he is. Thankfully, we've um, grabbed a few portions on the way, so we can continue on to the SSN. And I do actually go back and I go and pick up Body Slam here. Although Gengar's attack's not very good, one of the best things about Gengar is its move pool. So, naturally, it only learns... It starts off with three moves. It starts off with Nightshade, Confuse, Ray, and Lick. And then at level 29, it learns Hypnosis. And then level 38, it learns Dream Eater. Green Meter and Hypnosis is a killer combination. But for the early game, like we're not going to get to level 30 yet for quite a while. And um, we are doing minimum battle, so this will actually take quite a while. So I pick up Body Slam, um, and we can um, get through most of these Pokemon quite easy, because as you go further through the game, Nightshade's going to start doing less and less per hit. Um, even, even though you are quite high, like I'm level 26 here. But as you can see there, Body Slam does way much more damage. So we're going to stick with Body Slam for, for a little while until we can get Thunderbolt from Lieutenant Surge. So against this rival here, we've literally... That's the first bit of damage we've taken. Gengar is just shredding this run. It is insane how quick we are getting through this game. So once we've beaten the rival, we can go off and beat um, Lieutenant Surge. And I've got no doubt in mind, this is again going to be such an easy battle. Like so so easy the the biggest threat is going to be the Raichu considering it has Thunderbolt but I don't think even Sonic Boom can hit us as a ghost type it is a normal move so I don't actually think it can hit us it, ah, it can hit us wait is Sonic Boom damage like typeless that's interesting I've never noticed that before Ooh, I might have to keep that um, in mind for the um, when I do a Voltorb run later when it comes up on the wheel but still, Lieutenant Surge is a joke. We're level 29 at this point, probably a little bit over level, but you kind of have to go against so many um, trainers just to be able to go through the game quite smoothly. Now we've got Thunderbolt. This is going to be one of our main moves for this run. <clears throat> it means that we can take out the... Um, when it comes to the very final rival, we can take out the Gyarados, we can take out the Charizard with it. It'll help us against Aerodactyl, against Lance. But for now, let's go talk about Erica. So, at this point, I do have no I do have Hypnosis. We've got Nightshade, we've got Thunderbolt, and I've got Body Slam. So I've got a very good um, arsenal of moves here. 
so much so that even with Hypnosis's terrible accuracy, we've hit both Pokemon first time with it. So I'm just going to use Nightshade, take Mouse. Body Slam probably will do more, but I'd rather have the confirmed amount of damage here so I know I can take it out in so many hits. Nightshade, it's going to be a free hit KO on Vileplume. And there we go, we beat Erika without even taking a point of damage. So, next up, I'm going to go against Giovanni. It's the next logical move in um, the way that I do these runs now. When it comes to Celadon, you go to the department store, you go get Fly, you do go to Erika, then you loop back around Giovanni. If you've managed to get through all of that without um, with, without having to go to the Pokemon Center, you could actually use Dig or Escape Road and go straight back to Lavender Town, which saves you some time. Especially if you're going for the best time that you can get. So, Giovanni. Um, best move here I can use is Nightshade. It's going to take down most of the Pokemon in one, one two hits. The Rhyhorn's going to be in three hits. And the Kangaskhan. This is where we need Body Slam and Thunderbolt for. So we're going to use Thunderbolt. Our special is ridiculous, so that's why Thunderbolt was a better choice to use here. And we're level 36. So now we've beaten, beaten Giovanni. We can get the Silph Scope and go off to Lavender Tower. And you might have seen just before we did the Giovanni battle, I was at 1 hour and 47 in-game minutes there. Usually at this point, I'm around about 2 and a half to 3 hours. So, <laughs> like, you can probably tell this is going to be an extremely quick run at this point. Moving on to Lavender Tower, we've got the rival to defeat. We're at 1 hours, 49 in-game minutes. This run is going so, so well. I've not lost a battle yet. And I'm not sure I'm actually going to lose a battle. Thunderbolt's going to take out the Pidgeotto. Execute. This is where I start to realize that Execute is probably going to be the biggest problem on this run. Because what I'm planning to do is not keep Nightshade. Now I've got Hypnosis. What I actually want is I want Dream Eater. So I can do the Hypnosis Dream Eater combo and recover HP when I need to. I'm going to keep Thunderbolt and I actually will get rid of Body Slam later on. Because in Saffron City, which is where we're going to go next after this battle, I want to pick up Psychic. <clears throat> and I know that means we've got two Psychic moves on our arsenal um, with Dream Eater and Psychic, but it means that I don't have to put someone to sleep to be able to use it, which means we'll get through Agatha really quickly. We'll get through... Um, God, we'll get through most of them really quickly, to be fair. So it's after Lavender, I went straight to Saffron. I haven't done Koga yet. I haven't done Blaine yet. I haven't even done Sabrina yet. I need to do Self Core. So I think level 39, I'm probably a little over level for this battle, to be fair. Pidgeot managed to get two wing attacks off. It doesn't do much damage. Execute comes out. We've still, we, we, have, we don't have Nightshade at this point now. So we're going to have to use Body Slam. And our attack isn't great. And we aren't badge boost glitching. But we are still going to be able to take it out quite comfortably because the only damaging moves that Execute has, um, well, at this stage of the game, it's only Barrage. Uh, it does have Leech Seed, which it seems confusing why later on in the game, Executor doesn't have Leech Seed, but I'm not going to go, I'm not going to um, discrepancy against that. <laughs> it's also where I realise that Alakazam is going to be a big problem without a physical attacking move. Even with um, how well we're doing, Body Slam still a two-hit KO on it. Thunderbolt's going to be a one-hit KO. Oh, no. It's a two-hit KO on Charizard. I was not expecting that. Honestly, I was not expecting that. But we've beaten Silph Core Rival, and we still haven't lost a battle. This is this is going really well. And I'm showing this battle because sometimes this guy in front of Giovanni is sometimes harder than Giovanni, I found. He's got a Cubone, and um, a Drowsy, and I think he's got a Marowak, I think. But as you can see there, Dream Eater takes it out. And this is why we use Hypnosis Dream Eater, because we can get back some HP. It means we don't have to keep going back to a Pokemon Center as much. And then Hypnosis decides it doesn't want to start hitting, and we get a special drop. And Drowsy takes us out with confusion. Out of all the gym leaders, out of all the rival battles, this trainer here is the one that, that ends our run from being perfect and that really annoyed me it really really annoyed me when i was doing this run but we're going to it next time we're going to use body slam against the cubone take it out quicker 
Drowsy comes out, we need to put it to sleep. We don't hit it, put it to sleep without it uses headbutt. We do hit it, put it to sleep, and then it wakes straight back up. Hypnosis is not on my side this battle. And he uses headbutt, thankfully. Oh no. We lose again? What is with this rocket? <laughs> Giovanni, move over. You've been you've been replaced. This guy is much harder than you. Okay, so we'll go with the same strategy again. We need to put these to sleep, otherwise we can't get past this trainer. And I can't believe that this is the trainer of all of them that's giving me the most problems. Like, when you when I first started this run, what when please comment and tell me which you thought the trainers would be like the most difficult to um, go against, because I never thought it would be this rocket. When we finally make it past the drowsy though, Marowak comes out, hypnosis, dream eater, easy done. So I think it was just that luck was not on our side going into this battle. And we can go against Giovanni. <coughs> Excuse me. And Giovanni, he is not going to be a problem whatsoever. He does have ground type Pokemon, but we are generally faster than a lot of him. So we can get um, Thunderbolt same. We can get um, Hypnosis as in. It's just going to be quite an easy battle. Kangaskhan is not going to be a problem whatsoever. Thunderbolt, it's going to be a two hit KO. Rage isn't going to do anything against us. Rhyhorn comes out. And Hypnosis it. We're going to use Dream Eater. See, the reason why I wanted Dream Eater on my arsenal is because it's actually a 100 base power move at 100 um, accuracy. Which is, a re which is really good for Gen 1. There's not many moves that are um, better than that. Psychic on its own is 90 base power. So you've got a much more powerful Psychic move. That recovers your HP. It's, it's, a, it's a great move. Like, as long as you can get Hypnosis um, set up, which is arguably quite hard with a 60 um, base accuracy. It's um, yeah, it's it's a really powerful combination. So Hypnosis, the uh, Kadabra now against Sabrina. We're going to use Body Slam. I did pick up Psychic earlier, but considering some of the battles that we had to do, I wanted to keep Body Slam just a little bit longer. So Body Slam is going to be a two-hit KO on the Mist of Mime. It does get um, a light screen up, which is not very good. Venomoth comes out. We're going to use Thunderbolt. And that's what the light screen does. That probably would have taken out in one if it wasn't for um, light screen. So now we can get Hypnosis up. We can use Dream Eater and get back our HP. Puts us on a good amount of HP for Alakazam. The main thing we want Alakazam not to do is use Psychic. If it does, we probably lose. Thankfully, we get the Hypnosis off. We're going to use Body Slam. It's going to be a two-hit KO because we get a Clutch Crit there. So that's Sabrina done. And still... No gym leader's been able to defeat me yet. Only that rocket in Silphcrow. <laughs> Which I'm still mad about. I'm still mad about that. <laughs> Moving on to Koga. We're at 2 hours and 21 in-game minutes here. Still so, so quick. Let's see how we do against Koga. Actually, I'm going to spoil it for you. He's a poison type gym leader. We've got psychic moves. This, I didn't, I didn't even go in at full health here. This was an easy battle. Do you know, thinking about this run, um, I couldn't, I've watched other people do Ghastly, Haunter, and Gengar runs before, and they've always been quick. They've always been really good on Gen 1. I don't think, um, I think I very much underestimated how quickly we would get through this game. Like, Alakazam in itself, when I would say is the OG king of, um, of Gen 1. It is a powerhouse, but... Even in Gen 1, Alakazam, like my run, I did 4 hours, 4 minutes for Alakazam. So, we're already at Blaine and it's 2 hours, 34 minutes. An hour, like, at this point in the game, I think I was around about 3 hours, 10 minutes for Alakazam. So, yeah, we're, we are flying through this so quickly. And as I've been doing more and more of these runs, I have been figuring out quicker ways to go about things. So, I'm doing this on 2 times speed instead of 4 times speed. I actually get better times when I do it on two times speed, so I've been doing that. Um, I've been skipping out some sections that I used to go and do. I've been missing items out that I used to go and do. Um, and even when it comes to Elite Four, most times I will make sure that I've I don't even use like recovery items when I go against um, Bruno because he's just trash. Tr Bruno is trash. It's very unlikely that I ever lose against him. And 
I'll come back to this battle right now actually. So as you've seen on previous runs, sometimes this Rapidash just gets lucky and just spams Fire Spin. It started to do that there, but thankfully because of our speed we managed to get it asleep and then use Dreamy to get our HP back. Same um, same strategy we're going to use against Arcanine. Dreamy is arguably our most powerful move and with it being asleep it means that it's not going to be able to attack us. So after a couple of Dream Eaters, um, we beat Blaine. So still, no Gym Leads have beaten us yet. Still. <laughs> uh, it's a good thing to pick up Fire Blast as well. I'm pretty sure that Gengar does learn Fire Blast. It... Hmm, does it? No, it doesn't actually. Um, it, learns, it learns Mega Drain, which is good. But I don't think we actually need it. We need Fire Blast for this. So against Giovanni now, we've equipped Psychic instead of Body Slam. Level 47 now, and this is where <sighs> Doug Trio does not get taken out in one, and it uses Dig, and it's taken until Giovanni to beat us, for a gym leader to beat us, which, as you can see why I took a big pause there, I was astounded, absolutely astounded that we managed to get beaten there by the Doug Trio. <laughs> so, what can we do to make sure we have, we it doesn't use um, Dig on us? Well, we can we know the right horn goes down in one sidekick. Doug Trio, I think it might have been arranged to be honest, but you know what? I'm going to try and get it to sleep. We miss there. Is there Dig range as well? It was arranged. So if we can get it to sleep, we can use Dream Eater and get our HP back. That's it's still dreamy it doesn't take it out flipping heck well we've um got back our hp psychic's going to take out the needle queen and the needle king we've got a critical hit there i don't know if that was a range needle king are you going to go down in one we do it is it wasn't a range we it definitely did take it out in one now Rhydon comes out it's not asleep and i misclick there to use dream eater i am going to put it asleep though because i want to be at full health to go against the rival next Rhydon only ever uses Horn Drill or Fissure, and they only hit if they are quicker than you. So, now we've beaten Giovanni. Let's go beat the rival before the Elite Four. And I'm not sure how this is going to go. Genuinely not sure. So, let's see how it goes. Starts off with Pidgeot. He does have agility at this point, so he, he could potentially outspeed us if he gets one in. Thunderbolt takes it out in one. Rhyhorn comes out, we use Psychic, and it's a one hit KO. Execute comes out, this is the one I'm more worried about. Hypnosis hits, and we don't have Body Slam now, so we can try and get the special drops. But, ooh, we use the Solar Beam, so we managed to take it out in three. That's good to know. Gyarados comes out, it's four times weeks of electric, so Thunderbolt's going to be a one hit KO. Alakazam comes out, we don't have Body Slam, so we're going to have to rely on our special moves. Thunderbolt does half damage with a crit, so it's going to be a free hit KO. And there we go, that's Alakazam down without taking any HP. We're level 49 now, and Charizard should go down to one or two Thunderbolts. And it gets, <laughs> we get a crit, so it goes down in one. Get in. We didn't even take a point of damage for that, so let's head on straight to the Elite Four. <laughs> I've not even used my rare candies and I'm going into Rot Lorelei here. Our speed is insane, our special is insane. Defense and attack, arguably mediocre, but we don't need it now. We don't need it. We just need to make sure. That's a two hit KO. He's only going to use rest here because it's a psychic move and I'm weak to psychic. So it's a free hit, really. Cloister comes out. Is it a one hit KO on Thunderbolt? It is. We get a critical. <laughs> so I don't actually know if that's a range. Slowbro comes out. Thunderbolt, is this going to be a one hit KO? No, it's going to be a two hit KO. She uses Super Portion. Ooh, we're looking really good here. Usually Lorelei is very, um, very hard. We use Thunderbolt, she's paralyzed. She uses Ice Punch and... Oh, you're kidding me. I hate that Jinx. This has happened multiple times on my runs. That Jinx using Ice Punch freezes me and ends my runs. That's so annoying. So annoying. I hate that jinx. Ah. Well, the second battle goes pretty much um, the same. Thunderbolt's just decimating her team. 
it seems that Thunderbolt was a range on the cloister and it's used clamp so it is taken out off HP from us but when we get the Thunderbolt in it can go down in 2, level 50 now Slowbro, Thunderbolt it's still not going to take out Slowbro in 1 but it's going to take it out in 2 Jinx comes out, I need to get to this to sleep or please don't freeze, please don't freeze. you are kidding me twice in a row Oh my god, this Jinx. What what are the chances that in two goes at this, it freezes me on the first ice punch? That's insane. <sighs> oh, it's all fun. It's all fun. <laughs> so, as I was saying, I should have really put it to sleep. Because then it can't use ice punch against me. We get a critical on the slow bro, so we've actually got better PP points now. We're going to use Hypnosis, it goes to sleep. We can use Thunderbolt, it's going to be a free hit KO. Please stay asleep, because I do not want to get frozen again. There we go. Last up is Lapras. Thunderbolt, is it a one hit KO? No, it's going to be two hits and we get confused. That's great. We get hit in confusion. That's great. <laughs> oh, Thunderbolt, it goes down into, and we're on to Bruno. Oh, well. So, from the outset, Lorelei looked very easy, but that Jinx just destroyed us. I am so annoyed at how, how much that Jinx, dis Jinx destroyed us. <sighs> right. Psychic on Onyx goes down. We're level 51 now. Hitmonchan, Psychic, it's going to be down in one. Get in. Hitmonlee, Psychic, it's going to go down in one. Get in. Onyx. Psychic, it goes down in one. And last but not least, Psychic, does it go down in one? No. That's very weird that we didn't take out the match amp in one hit there. I mean, we are seven levels lower, but yeah, we still won. <laughs> right. We're actually going to need to heal and restore our power points now. So let's go. Let's go against Agatha. When I do these runs, by the way, if I lose against the Elite Four member, I have to start the Elite Four again. So if you think I've, if if you if for like past runs when I've um, got to the the rival at the end and then lost, I have to then work my way all the way back to the rival through the Elite Four again. It's annoying, but it keeps these runs funner and truer for me. So yeah. So now um, we're against Agatha, we need to get a sleep on the goal bat, and it gets a critical hit with wing attack. Great. When I finally get back to Agatha, because Lorelei again was such a such a pain. That that jinx. I went against um Lorelei ten times in total on this run. On this video, like for Gengar. And seven out of the ten times I went against Lorelei, I got frozen on the first ice punch. So I don't know what was up with the game this time. It just really wanted to freeze me and end my end, end my run. <laughs> but anyway, back to Agatha. We got the special drop on the Haunter there, and we haven't lost any HP yet. Our bot comes out, Psychic, do we take an item one? We don't. Wow. As if our bot tanked the Psychic. <laughs> right, level 60 Gengar against my level 52 Gengar. Whoever gets the sleep first wins, I'd say. And I get the I get the sleep, I get a critical hit, she uses a super portion, and there we go, we've beaten Agatha. Actually, I think that was the second try on Agatha, thinking about it. Um she wasn't very difficult considering we did have psychic and pretty much all the Pokemon are weak to it. We do need to heal up against um before we go against Lance. And I was I was debating here whether to teach Ice Beam. Because a lot of the this would make the battle go a lot quicker, but I decided against it. I need those moves that I've got currently for the, the end rival. So Psychic is gonna do quite a lot of damage on Dragonairs, but not enough. It's gonna be two hit KOs. We do get a special drop there. Thankfully, the Dragonairs do have agility, so that means that that's all they're going to use, thanks to good AI in Gen 1. See? Only going to use agility. Which also means that the um, the Dragonite's only going to use agility, so that means the Aerodactyl is going to be the biggest threat now. Thunderbolt takes it down in one. 
And we just got the Dragonite, which is only going to use agility against us. Oh, I mean barrier, which is also a psychic move. And then it uses agility as well. So this is pretty much a free battle for about three out of the four, three out of the five Pokemon. Pretty easy. So last but not least, it's the rival, DJ Shadow. Again, go check out his channel if you um, if you love Pokemon content. It's actually really I, I'm enjoying his channel. So let's see how we do. Starts off with Pidgeot. Gengar comes out. We need to get Thunderbolt in. It's not going to take out in one, and she uses Mirror Move. Yeah, it's not. That's not too much damage. That's not. That's all right. That's all right. Alakazam comes out. We need to get it to sleep. We do. Whew. Right. We're going to get try and get a special drop on it. We don't get. Oh, we do get the special drop. Get in. So now Thunderbolt should do more damage. It's going to be a free hit KO now. Yes, it stayed asleep. It complied. Rhydon comes out. Must put it asleep. Oh, it's walked straight back up. Oh, that's using Fury. That doesn't actually have a move that can attack us. This is this is a free battle, this one. Okay, now it's asleep. This is Dreamy, so let's get back our HP. It may not seem like much, but even having a little bit more HP is going to do us better. Going to be two Dreamy hits to take it out. Level 55 now. Executor comes out. This is the one I was more scared for. Because it puts us to sleep. And thankfully it doesn't have a damaging move. But putting us to sleep just means that it's going to take ages to get past it. So once we've got it to sleep, we can use Psychic, see if we can get the special drops. It's going to take a while to take this Executor down. I forgot how bulky Executor can be. I can't, can't wait to do a run with it myself, to be fair. Grass Psychic is a really good combination. Okay, now we've got it back to sleep. We use another Psychic, see if we can get another special drop. We do get the special drop. Come on. It's back awake. Hypnosis. I wonder if a Dream Eater would take it out. Nah, I need to save them. Psychic. Special drop again. It should be one more Psychic and we won. And there we go. We get a critical hit there, so it didn't actually matter. Gyarados comes out and Thunderbolt hits. That's down in one. It's four times effective. Charizard comes out, Thunderbolt, can we win, can we win, we get a critical, get in, first try against the rival with Gengar. Oh. So yeah, you're probably wondering now, what was the end time? We know we were level um, 56 there, but what was our time? And if you guess right, I will make you the rival in the next video. <laughs> Or one of my future ones. I do have these planned weeks weeks in advance. So, yeah, let's see. What time did we get? We got level 56. And flipping heck. Three hours and nine minutes. That's beating my far-fetched run, which was my fastest run before by nearly... Wow, wow. That is amazing. Wow, we have got a new king of gen 1 here we really do <laughs> right guys thank you for watching the video i really appreciate everyone who has so far um left comments subscribe likes and all that sort of stuff please keep doing that um we'll see where these videos go and i'll catch you in the next video take care